it's pretty well known that Fallout 76 is controversial. There are several reasons for this, many fans disliking online multiplayer titles, gatekeeping specific features behind a subscription model, perhaps a lack of desired RPG elements. But among the listed reasons, it's claimed lore breaks. In this series, we'll look at these statements. Let's discuss if Fallout 76 broke the lore of the Brotherhood of Steel. To start off, I should point out there is a difference between Redkin and Lordbreak. A Redkin, retroactive continuity, means to change a historical understanding of a piece of lore by revealing new information. A Lordbreak is a contradiction of an established canon. This is often confused, but another way to look at it. A Lordbreak always reckons, but a Redkin does not always break lore. An example, a piece of known canon may say that Ginny walk down the street Wednesday morning and return home around 5 p.m. If in another story, it's added that Jenny stopped at her friend's house during the trip, that's a redkin, but it doesn't break the canon. A lore break would be something along the lines of changing Jenny's walk from Wednesday to Friday. Prior information already established that her walk was on a Wednesday. Not knowing prior information does not mean canon is broken. Whether new information that's presented is enjoyable, however, is another matter and is subjective. As for the Brotherhood of West Virginia, there are actually two incarnations. One more native to the area, originally led by Paladin Taggarty, and one from California, led by Paladin Romani. Between the two, we'll be discussing three different issues presented by those who feel there's lore breaks in this interpretation of the Brotherhood. While there may be more, these are the three I often see the most. How the original West Virginia chapter formed, how the second West Virginia chapter formed, and the Super Mutant vs. Brotherhood conflict. Let's begin. Now, one of the main criticisms I've seen about the original formation of 76's Brotherhood chapter is largely based on their existence outright. To get more specific, the story goes that the original chapter of the Appalachian Brotherhood formed when Captain Roger Maxson, soon to be leader and founder of the Brotherhood of Steel, got in touch via radio contact with Lieutenant Elizabeth Taggarty over satellite radio. He stated that he was specifically looking for someone he could trust in the Appalachian area. And after breaking her faith in the government by giving her details of them practicing human experiments, he established the Brotherhood and she took charge of the West Virginia chapter, which was later killed off prior to the start of the game due to the Scorched. While many do complain about the faction feeling pretty shoehorned in, this particular focus is on lore breaks. In terms of this breaking lore, the complaint largely talks about how nothing like this was brought up in any other game, and it being extremely convenient that they had a working radio system. This is one of those examples of a redcon rather than lore break, due to there being nothing that states that there was prior technological limitations of the Lost Hills Bunker. Indeed, the bunker question was a government facility and would likely have a radio system equipped. And there's nothing stated in the original Fallout games or the Fallout Bible about the Brotherhood operating solely out in California, or at least attempts to establish Brotherhood factions. Now, that being said, according to Rothschild and Fallout 3, the only known locations are the West Coast, DC, and the Chicago Detachment. So it seems that, at least up until Lions and Friends got sent out eastward, there weren't exactly many groups floating around. And this was true even at 76's launch. This group died. Well, at least until the next section formed. So, following the death of the West Virginia chapter, and one year after 76's base storyline, Appalachia got a second chance to form a new Brotherhood of Steel's chapter. This time with not dead yet members. The story goes that High Elder Roger Maxson sent five Brotherhood members out to find what happened to the original Appalachian chapter, since communication got cut off with them in Lost Hills. One of the five died, another got sent back. The chapter was then established with three West Coast Originals and a bunch of Appalachian recruits. The claimed issue here is mostly two things. The first claim is the Brotherhood basically never left the safety of Lost Hills for about 80 years after leaving Mariposa. The second is that the journey to the east should be incredibly dangerous and nearly impossible. The first claim it doesn't really hold much weight. More specifically, there's not much information at all to really back up the claim. 
there's one particular section in the loosely canon Fallout Bible that Chris Avalon wrote, where he does say that they were held up for about 80 years, but do keep in mind that the Fallout Bible, even in the first chapter, does say it was more of a book of suggestions, not hardcore truth, and always tended to be subject to change. Indeed, even the Fallout Bible had disagreements about certain subjects, corrections, and later additions, and just change of minds. A lot of maybe this, maybe that type material. There's even evidence within the words to suggest they didn't just hold themselves up in a bunker. Where the Fall of Bible states that, to help build Lost Hill, they scavenged nearby towns. I think it's more likely that they occasionally went outside to do some easy missions, trade runs, combat training, but primarily stayed inside. Phrasing is fairly ambiguous anyways. Regardless, there's nothing hard written in the games to say they originally stayed inside their bunker. The second point is a bit harder to say, mostly because it's just speculation that it would be extremely dangerous. Thing is, a lot of characters have traveled pretty far distances. William Brannis, an unclean member in his family, left California to DC. Harold made a similar trip. Even in Fallout 2, there was a woman who made the trip from Lake LaBerge, which is in Canada, to Redding, California. The idea that two Brotherhood soldiers in power armor along with a scribe making such a trip isn't really that far-fetched of an idea. Yes, there would be dangers, but they are trained combatants with high-tech gear. It's mostly just assumptions and headcanons rather than any hard facts. The only real piece of evidence I could find that might be canon is that the Midwest might have mile-wide tornadoes, and that's mostly a rumor that Cassidy heard. Plus, I'm not sure if such tornadoes would be constantly acted or faded and out. Only other dangers we fully know about are raiders and tribals. Sure, random mutated creatures, but other than Deathclaws, Yaogawai, and perhaps Sheep Squatch, not too many could really handle power armor trained Brotherhood soldiers. Finally, we get into the discussion about the Brotherhood of West Virginia and the war against the Supermutants. Alright, so the end of Still Dawn and pretty much the entire storyline of Still Rain, the Supermutants become a focus in the narrative. They attack Fort Atlas, home of Romani's Brotherhood of Steel, and none of the West Coast guys recognize them. Atlas is under attack. These big mutant people blew a hole right through the wall of the substructure and came pouring through. The criticism here is that you think they would. After all, that's the very basis for Roger Maxson deserting the US military. He and his team discover what was going on, the colonel kills himself, and soldiers demand answers from the scientists. Learn that the government ordered this, there's executions, mutiny, demands for answers over the radio, then the bomb. So, Paladin Romani, Knight Shin, and Scribe Valdez, not knowing anything about the Supermutants, is a bit odd. To be clear, neither one of them actually saw the Supermutants experiments. Romani was a National Guard stationed near Mariposa, but later joined after the Brotherhood formed. Shin was a recruit from the Mojave, and Scribe Valdez was more or less born into it. Her parents were early recruits. Actually, it's not fair to say they're totally unaware of the mutiny in the group's history. Shin directly references the Mariposa experiments. I don't like this, Romani. We should be done with him here and now and level this laboratory. This is just like what Elder Maxon faced at Mariposa. Or have you forgotten? Elder Maxon came to regret acting rashly there. Or have you forgotten? Digging further into it and looking at Roger's diary, I'm not entirely sure he knew too terribly much about the extent of what was going on. He knew that there were human experimentations, no doubt, possibly ejections and the like. He might have known that they were attempting to make super soldiers, but I'm not entirely sure he knew about the intricate details, like massive muscle growth, greening skin. Did he ever actually see a super mutant? Did he see failed experiments? I'm not entirely sure, there's no detail in place about that. He was trying to get answers from the scientists, and mentions that he started to believe their stories. But the exact details about what he knew? We don't know. Might explain why he was just so willing to abandon Mariposa, rather than destroying the FEB labs, why nobody in Fallout 1 knew anything about the super mutants no record keeping. But 25 years after Roger Maxa left is still a significant chunk of time. I barely remember anything that happened 25 years ago. So with little record keeping and word of mouth passes, it's not unreasonable that the California bunch would be unaware of what a super mutant is. I did catch one thing that may be possibly flirting with the line of lore break while doing research, but it's nothing too terribly major and it really just depends which is canon. Let me explain. When you go down to the glow in Fallout 1 and get an ancient Apollo disc from a dead Brotherhood soldier, you can scan it and get a little bit of history. In it, D. Allen, the writer of the disc, refers to Roger Maxon as Captain rather than High Elder and signs himself as a member of the Army rather than a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. His signing suggests that the Brotherhood of Steel has not formed yet. Now this is important due to the timing of everything. 
If he had left for a glow in 27-7 during the exodus from Mariposa to Lost Hills, that works out just fine because the Brotherhood of Steel has not formed yet. And that's what's stated in the game from Cabot. Oh, well in the exodus, the Brotherhood split into two groups. The group that broke away robbed the others of some of the weapons and, and they went south. Then about 10 years ago, we sent out knights to look for them and all they found was ruins. No one knows what happened. He specifically says it happens during the Exodus, but the Fallout Bible contradicts this by saying it happened in 2134, just 27 years prior to the original Fallout. If Alan left in 2134, that puts 76 as odd with the Fallout Bible's information as the setting of the original base game was 2102. Plus 76 established the Brotherhood was formed in 2077. Or maybe it's habit. Sophia's holotape, which takes this quasi-religious tone, also refers to Maxon as captain. It's not much of a big deal either way, and it's more likely the breakaway happened during the Exodus. And the Fallout Bible is generally accepted as being a flimsy canon state of a soup canon, if not contradicted in the games. I don't know. I thought the disconnect was interesting. Now after all that, the honest truth is, no, 76 didn't break the established canon concerning the Brotherhood of Steel. There are some unanswered questions. Why was Maxon looking for someone in Appalachia in the first place? Was he just randomly contacting military units to establish a national brotherhood? If so, that does have the potential to break lore, due to Rothschild in Fallout 3 stating that there was only three places where the brotherhood was formed, unless something has changed. The West Coast, DC, and Chicago. If Roger was growing places, that really has the potential to mess with the canon. As where the second edition of the Appalachia's Brotherhood's continued survival. So the bigger issue isn't about canon nor lore, it's about shoehorning the Brotherhood into every game. A lot of fans are simply tired of them and feel that they're a constant, unnecessary addition. And that's a valid opinion. I get it, sometimes I feel that way. But there's a difference between lore break and a dislike of lore. Still, if Roger Maxon was growing a national network in the name of the Brotherhood, we may have found the written excuse to include them in future titles, but that's speculation. Regardless, 76 Brotherhood falls within canon, but there is something to be said about being tired of a regularly reoccurring theme. If you like this and would like me to continue looking into more potential lore breaks, let me know, and maybe I'll take a deep dive. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any future lore break videos. Later.